Hey all, uh, welcome to the Leap and Libations Blind Tasting. This is our uh, first episode. Um, first, I'll start off by introducing all of us. My name is Travis, and I will be your main host here. And we also have um, Roman. Hey, Roman, you want to uh, introduce yourself, buddy? Hey, guys, Roman, LNL Trident. Um, thanks for joining us for our first blind tasting event. Hopefully, we'll uh, see you guys at many more of these, and uh, let's keep it rolling. All right, thanks, Roman. And then we have uh, Andrew. Hey, Andrew, you want to uh, give us a little introduction about yourself? Hey, folks. Uh, glad you all could make it. I'm super glad to be here. It's uh, an ex exciting thing we're embarking on. So I look forward to seeing all your faces again uh, at our upcoming events as well. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. And then we also have Phil here, but he's uh, taking care of a little something right now. So uh, I just pre appreciate you being on, Phil. Um, what we'll uh, first start off with is what, what LNL is. Um, and I think I'm going to ask Roman to help me with a little bit of this, the background of Leaf and Libations and how it got started. <clears throat> so Leaf and Libations is a, let's say, an unbiased cigar review group. Um, basically, what we started the premise of is um, the cigars that we do are bought and paid for by ourselves. And, um, you know, we're not trying to throw out numbers or anything else for everybody. Uh, we're just going to give you flavors. We're just going to give you an honest opinion of what we think. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, we like to kind of engage with the public, you know, so um, for events and things like that, we've done blind tastings at lounges and obviously these Zoom meetings now because of uh, all the COVID and everything else. But um, it's really we just try to engage with the customers and uh, consumers and also with the industry folk and kind of be the middleman between those people. So we were started in 2015. Um, all of us have worked for different and various other um, cigar review uh, companies, if you will. And we've kind of just decided to do our own thing. So uh, that's who we are. Awesome, Roman. Thanks. Yeah. I remember when I uh, first met you guys, you guys were doing a, an event at a, a local store by me. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because, uh, you know, the way you guys established an unbiased understanding of a cigar and what you actually like, you know, because so much of us look at a band and think it looks good or go by a brand. And, and uh, you know, I didn't fully understand all that until I actually went to one of these and, and thanks again for asking me to uh, join up with you guys and continue this uh, virtually. Well, it's going to be awesome. It's a good road. Absolutely. All right. So here it is, right? Everyone got theirs? Let's see it. All right. So first, let's talk a little bit about um, what we all like to do with a cigar the first time we're trying it or doing a blind tasting. Um, you know, me personally, and I'll go around with some of the guys here and talk to uh, you guys about it. I like to take a good whiff right on the end here and see if I see what kind of smells I'm getting, right? And um, believe it or not, I actually, depending on my nostril, you know, I, I kind of do get a little bit of a, there you go, Ryan, a little bit of a difference um, in smell. And, um, you know, let's, we can take a look at it and see what it looks like for us. You know, what is the overall profile of it? Dark, light, medium, shade. Is it real veiny? You know, all these, all these different attributes, you know, let's take a look at the cigar and, and what we think of all these different things. And so that way we can actually formulate, you know, an honest opinion of a cigar. And normally, I like to do a straight cut, personally. I don't know what you guys like, or if you guys have any comments on what you guys like to do when um, you guys initially try a cigar. I like to straight cut it. I feel like that's the best way to, to get the flavor profiles that I'm looking for out of a new cigar. Um, and then I can also um, get a great dry draw on it. So right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut mine. And I hope you all will too, if you haven't already. I know some of you guys just couldn't wait and I get it. <laughs> so if you haven't um, already lit it up, we can take a nice dry draw off of it. I 
I maybe try to come up with some flavors that maybe you're tasting. If you taste any. Okay. Now, I'm going to lightly toast the end of it, just like this. Just so that way, all the way around, you know, we get a nice, even burn. Now, Roman, on the other hand, he um, he toasted his first, so he uh, he likes to get rid of those impurities, you know. I guess, I guess I don't like filtered water. I don't know. So, initial draw. What's everyone thinking? How's it lighting for you? What did it look like? So it's Robusto. I don't know if you guys no, noticed that. Um, Robusto size, it's got a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. The binder is Sumatra, and the filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. So it's got a variety of things going on. So we have a, um, we got a comment from Tom Z. Tell us a little bit about what uh what you do. Well, now that I'm on mute. Uh, so if it's a brand new cigar or something I've never had or, you know, a blind tasting like this, I always keep this little plastic bin of crystallized ginger on hand and just use it kind of like as a palate cleanser. Oh. Nice. Like I just got up a few minutes ago to go grab it because after my nap, I didn't like whatever the hell was going on in my mouth after the, the coffee I drank. So I was like, all right, let me just try and reset this. And that way, when I whatever I do end up tasting, it's not thrown off by, I don't know, if I have coffee with caramel in it or Red Bull or a cream soda or whatever. And where where would one procure some crystallized ginger from? Hey, your local grocer. <laughs> awesome. I've gotten them at uh oh what is it better, better health foods. I know Whole Foods have them. I mean they're just. They typically when they used to you used to be able to buy candy in bulk. It's in that that area. So it's something you can get readily. I've never purchased well, it. Before. I don't know if it's something. Some people don't like it. It's, okay. It's I mean it is strong. It's a strong ginger flavor because it's just straight up ginger. So some people think it's too spicy, but for me it works well. I like it and it cleans my palate. So. <laughs> yeah. Very specific. All right, does anyone else have anything going on with their cigar that's out of the normal? Um, anyone? I noticed someone did. Um, Ernest, you're talking a little bit about the, the foot smoke. Why don't you go ahead, buddy? Oh, uh, I, I, love, I love foot smoke. I mean, I mostly smoke outdoors, and so... I feel like the foot smoke is like an added part of the experience. Um, sometimes you have these cigars that produce tons of, um, you know, good smoke, you know, when you, when you suck on it, but then, you know, they have kind of like a meager and you don't really know where you stand as far as like how, how it's lit if you're, if you're occupied doing something else. And this, this cigar seems to have like a, um, just a, just a beautiful thick um, foot smoke and a super tight. I love that just really tight white ash the like you can't even really tell the little rings for each draw you know which makes me think i feel like that makes the construction just a little bit a little step up you know sometimes you have these large rings and i, I don't know if that really you know contributes to construction but every cigar that i've seen that looks like this immaculate ash is um seems to be well constructed to me yeah and what do you think contributes to that large amount of foot smoke i mean you think it's the wrapper the binder the filler does anyone have any input on that what, what I don't know. more um foot smoke than others curious i have uh, a couple of thoughts about the the smoke output uh, yeah. comes from my lawn care knowledge uh, you know, since these are uh, a natural product made from leaves the the leaves are um dependent on the soil uh, and a, in my, from my knowledge, the 
sort of the whiter the ash and the more smoke output is uh, a, a reflection of the nutrients in the soil, specifically the micronutrients like calcium and magnesium. Hmm. Interesting. So it, what you're saying, I guess, is like if we see an ash that's a little darker, it's normally grown possibly in a soil that doesn't have as much micronutrients, but if it's whiter, then it has the micronutrients. That's what you're getting at? Yes, I, I mean, it, like all things, it's on a spectrum. Um, there right. are a whole slew of nutrients that you add to soil to make it more fertile. Uh, the more fertile the soil, and then uh, hand in hand, the, the better the tobacco has been aged and cared for, I think the, the better the burn you'll get uh, the whiter the ash and um, the more smoke it'll produce. Back to Roman's earlier comment about perfect combustion. There's less uh, things getting in the way and more things feeding the, the cherry. That awesome. That's awesome. That makes sense, man. I mean, I've always wondered that. I don't know if you guys have, but some ashes are super white. Some are uh, a gray. Some are dark. I mean, I've had all different experiences. So uh, it makes sense. I don't... I, you know, there's no reason to not think that, that's for sure. Um, now that we've gotten through the cigar though, um, we're through that first third about, um, we're gonna set up another poll for you guys, see how it's going for you. Um, let me know what you think. Oh, here it is. Um, first question, what do you normally drink with a cigar when trying it for the first time? Interesting. And we've also posted, if you want to move it to the side, I don't know what you guys have on, if you're on your phone or whatnot, but we put a flavor wheel back there um, because one of these questions um, is going to ask you a little bit about flavors. Um, the next one is how often do you retrohale when you smoke a cigar? And if you don't know what that means, that's um, blowing the smoke through your nose. Next question, what category best describes the flavors you are experiencing in the initial third of this cigar? Hmm. Once again, please uh, take a look at the uh, flavor wheel. It's uh, definitely a tool that I know I like to use because um, sometimes like we were talking about earlier, you, um, you can't really put a flavor to what you're tasting until someone kind of puts it out there. Oh, and here are the results. So 38% of the people are pairing it with water, 15% Coke, Diet Coke or other pop, 46 are whiskey. And how often do you retrohale? Every puff, 15%, more than half of my draws, 23, less than half of my draws, 15%, every or a few draws here and there, 23% and never. 23%. Wow, across the board on that one. What category best describes the flavors you are experiencing in the initial third of this cigar? Once again, all across the board, but no coffee notes. Okay, interesting. And welcome to our special guest, Miguel. How are you doing, buddy? Good, everybody. How's everyone doing out there? Good. How are you? Uh, life is good, man. Life is good. How's everyone doing? Oh, everyone! Okay, I see everyone. <laughs> we got we got Tiger King. We got uh, we got some ladies here. I like it. I love it. Awesome. Tom, what's up, Tom? What's up, brother? <laughs> All right. So, Miguel, why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about you and who you are here to represent? Well, my name is Miguel Shodell. Uh, I've been in the industry about twenty years, premium cigar industry. I'm the national sales manager for uh, Crown Head Cigars. Um, based out of Nashville, Tennessee. All of our cigars are made by either Ernesto Perez Carrillo, Don Pepin Garcia, uh, Drew Estate, or Tobacco Letter Pichardo uh, down, in, uh, down in Nicaragua. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we make a lot of very artisanal blends. Uh, we're about 1,500 stores in the U.S. We're also sold internationally, Germany, parts of Latin America, and Asia, and Canada. And yeah, so that's uh, that's the whole rundown right there, you guys. Nice. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Um, so, are you smoking the same cigar we're smoking right now? 
actually I smoked one earlier and that was my last one here in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I do smoke a lot of the cigar that you have given out tonight. Is that what everyone's smoking right now? That's what you are all doing. Yeah, we haven't revealed it yet. We're okay. we're about a third in, and we wanted everyone to get kind of their initial thoughts on it and stuff Absolutely. before we uh, brought in our special guest. Oh man, I feel special now. I keep going. Oh, special. You are super special, buddy. I, <laughs> I see. I see. Ryan's on the call as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. I. Ryan is uh, Ryan is a guy who uh, I consider myself very lucky to call him a friend. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely a solid dude, man. So why don't you talk to us a little bit uh, about the cigar? Not right. necessarily tell us what it is, but just yeah. a little bit about it. Well, the wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf. Yep. And what's amazing is that Broadleaf is in very very short supply. Uh, we have a cigar that we make called Lake Carem, which is an extremely popular cigar that we make. It was number two cigar of the year on Half Wheels Top 25 list a couple of years ago. It comes in four different box press sizes, and the most popular size is a limited edition Bellicosa Fino. That's not what you're smoking. That cigar is Broadleaf, and because it's so hard to get Broadleaf right now, that, among a few other blends that we do, Tennessee Waltz, Yellow Rosa, Texas, coming out of Pepin's factory, all been on back order for over a year because of the Broadleaf wrapper. There are few companies, usually they're the bigger companies, that have a big, big supply of Broadleaf. And so this cigar has that beautiful, bold, bountiful, um, bodacious Broadleaf wrapper. It's just very thick, heavy, uh, very delicious wrapper. The, wrap, the, the binder on it is Ecuador Sumatra. Uh, Sumatra is known for having a very floral-like uh, flavor on the palate. The fillers are Nicaraguan and Dominican, and the Nicaraguan tobaccos, you're talking Esteli and Jalapa, some Dominican um, Peloto Cubano in there as well. And what's unique about that for us is, although a very large amount of our cigars for Crown Heads are rolled at Ernesto Perez Carrillo's factory, which is in Santiago, Dominican, um, we don't use a lot of Dominican tobacco. I mean, I, I, I could say out of all the cigars we make, um, I could probably point out two that have any Dominican tobacco in it whatsoever. Uh, this cigar is a very Nicaraguan cigar, a very Nicaraguan blend, and the Dominican kind of adds a little bit of a light floral uh, note to it and takes some of the strength off. I would say it's a solid medium-bodied cigar. There are plenty of people out there that think it's medium to full-bodied. Um, I think strength, it's medium. I do think it's a fuller-bodied cigar if you're trying to separate the two, right? We always get them kind of mixed up. But strength, medium-bodied. Medium bodied cigar, some people think it thinks it's stronger than that, um, but it is a full flavored cigar. It's got a lot of very heavy, thick, chewy smoke. If you notice the smoke on it is very thick and heavy. Uh, good friend Michael Herkelotz always kind of describes, how do you describe body? Well, body tends to be the thickness and the heaviness of the smoke uh, that, that comes off of a cigar and that's kind of the body of the cigar. So you can have a mild cigar that has a fuller body or you can have a, a strong cigar that is lesser in body. Um, so it's hard to kind of separate those two. Um, the cigar you're smoking right now is the Robusto version of the cigar. It comes in a few other sizes as well. The cigar to me has a very unique burn to it. Um, when you smoke it and you light it, it kind of reminds you of a few other cigars that are on the market made by this particular factory. It's just got a very beautiful, thick, well-rounded smoke to it. Awesome, man. That was, that was great. I, I love the cigar already. <laughs> and, you know, the, the ash on that cigar should hold on very well. Yeah. You may not get a crispy white ash, but you're going to get a little bit of a tinge of a, of a, of a little gray on the, on the edge of it. And it just has a very well-dense tobacco. So the tobacco leaves that are being used in that particular blend are very heavy, very thick, and which produce a very heavy cigar by hand. If you hold it in your hand, you hold it compared to another Robusto, it's very heavy. And sometimes when you feel it a little bit, it may feel like, man, this is a thick cigar. Maybe it's going to have a problem with draw, but it has a very, very dense wrapper, very dense filler, very dense binder, which gives you a very, very, it's a cigar. The best way I can describe the cigar is after you're done and you sit it down, it almost feels like you've eaten a big meal. That's the best way I can de describe the cigar. Sometimes you smoke some cigars, you feel it's very airy, very light. You could, you know, keep smoking, but this is definitely an end of the night, end of the day cigar. After you're done with it, you sit it down in the ashtray. you definitely feel like you've gone on a roller coaster. You've eaten a full meal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely experiencing that. All right. Right now, if you have any questions for Miguel, 
Um, please don't be afraid to either raise your hand or ask him the question. I saw Myron, you have your hand up. Um, hey, buddy, what do you got going on? And uh, what's your question, bud? Well, maybe uh, Miguel can help us answer the question why certain cigars put out a lot of smoke and others don't. I know I've read that the color of the ash is definitely based on the nutrient that the yeah. tobacco is grown in. But why do certain cigars give off a ton of smoke and others not so much? Well, a lot of that has to do with the, the particular tobacco that you're using. So you can look at the ash on a cigar and tell what kind of nutrients are in the soil. The whiter the ash, obviously, there's more magnesium and there's more, um, uh, uh, what am I thinking? Calcium? Uh, calcium, calcium in the soil. And a lot of that's been added in as you're growing because tobacco is a weed, right? So tobacco eats a ton of the nutrients from the soil, just destroys the soil. And that's why in places like Cuba, they still rotate fields because they don't have all the nutrients to add back. But in Nicaragua, Dominican, Honduras, um, those three main tobacco growing regions, as well as places where they grow rapper like Ecuador and Brazil, they add a lot of those nutrients back in. So they're very prominent in the tobacco leaf. The thicker the leaf, the fermentation, all of that combined can lead to a lot of, uh, to how the cigar burns. And so if you ever notice the thicker, heavier Maduro cigars, um, you, to, to, the Maduro is a process, right? Maduro isn't a leaf. A Maduro is a process. It translates to ripe in English. Maduro means ripe. And what that means is that fermentation of that tobacco, you ferment it longer. And when you ferment it longer, the salinity can go up, the sugar content can go up in the leaf, but the leaf darkens. And so you can't do that with everything. You can't do that with Connecticut. Uh, shade. You can't do that with Cameroon. It, you can't really do that with Sumatra. There are only particular leaves that will take that long fermentation. So things like broadleaf. Broadleaf comes from the fact that the shortest, the plant is short, but the leaves are very broad, grown in direct sunlight. So the leaves are much thicker and heavier. So it can stand up to a very long fermentation. And when you ferment the tobacco longer, those, the, all those nutrients kind of, the best way I can describe it is like you have a pot of chili and it tastes really good. But the longer you let that chili sit in your refrigerator and all those kind of flavors marry, it tastes better. And it just, and so that's how I describe that, that particular leaf and why it gives off so much smoke. Um, there are other nefarious ways you can do that as well, but that is the best description that I can give you why some cigars give off more smoke than others. You tend not to get that in Connecticut's. You tend not to get that in Cameroon's. It used, it's, if you ever notice when you smoke a Cameroon or whatever, they do burn very fast because they're very thin leaves and they give off a very light, airy smoke, where the denser, heavier leaves, Brazilian Adipiraca, uh, Connecticut Broadleaf, those leaves are so heavy and dense that there's a slower burn, and they give off a lot more plume and smoke off that cigar. Okay, I think now's the moment, Miguel. Why don't you do it for us? Let's do the unveiling. We've, we've oh. made our way through most of the cigar, and I, I think now we can maybe unveil to everyone what it is we're actually smoking and then maybe elaborate a little bit more about it and how it came about. All right, so you guys are smoking the La Coalition, the Coalition. La Coalition is a blend that we teamed up with Willie Herrera at Drew Estate. Uh, originally, we were talking to Willie about maybe even doing something with uh, El Titan de Bronze and eventually, I think uh, Jonathan Drew got involved as well and said, hey, involved as well. I said, dude, let's, let's do this at the DE factory. And we couldn't be more excited. And then the fact that they said, hey, we'll even use some of our broadleaf. And obviously, you know, the broadleaf they're using heavily on the, on, the, uh, uh, on the Liga number nine. And so for them to offer that to us, we felt that was an incredible gesture on their end. And uh, up to this point, they have only done one cigar for us. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions, um, any comments, did you guys have an idea who it was or what cigar it was, um, anything like that? Don't be afraid to put it in the comments or raise your hand. Um, now we do have a poll. Um, I'm going to save it till the end and reveal what, what the uh, general consensus of the cigar was because we have put the data together. Um, but this is our final poll. If you guys would please um, once again, fill this out. Um, that way we can compile data and we can figure out um, what you guys think about this cigar. Um, once again, uh, the questions are what body strength do you normally enjoy, um, smoking the cigar? Cause once again, um, cigars are subjective, right? 
Um, someone might, might like a milder cigar. Other people might like a fuller cigar. So this isn't necessarily what you like, but what you're experiencing. Um, the next question is, what flavor category best describes the flavors you're now experiencing? Now we've brought up the flavor wheel for you guys. Um, and what it is that you're experiencing on this last third, because a lot of cigars will transition throughout the cigar, um, what the prominent um, flavors are. And then the last and final question, is this a cigar you would smoke again? Hey, Miguel, while they're answering these questions, um, can you share with us uh, anything new that uh, Crown Heads is kicking out for this year? I know the trade show is uh, kind of canceled and everyone's always asking what's next. And I know some people really dislike that question, but um, I mean, there's a lot of guys on here are pretty seasoned cigar smokers. And, um, well, I will say that for us, there's a new cigar I just finished smoking right when I came on. It's called Mil Diaz, Mil Diaz. And it means a thousand days. And the Mil Diaz is a new blend that we are shipping. We've already announced it. We've showed it off to the retail world and the pre-orders are in. We've sold pre-sold all through the first shipment and the shipment first should start shipping to retailers in the next two to three weeks. It is called Mil Diaz, comes in four different Vitolas. And we are extremely excited to get Mil Diaz out. It is a complete 360 of the cigar you're smoking. This Mil Diaz should smoke like a very well-aged, has a light smoke, medium body, a medium strength, but has a very light body to it. Reminds you of a very old school kind of Cuban Romeo Julieta is the best way I can describe it. Has some very nice cedary floral notes. We're using a little Costa Rican in the Mildias that actually um, helps you salivate. It will create more salivation by the Costa Rican tobacco that we're using is strictly there because of the salt level. And by having that, there's Pedro de Oro in that cigar. And the Pedro de Oro is a very subtle tobacco that is very rare and very hard to get your hands on. Very few people are using Pedro de Oro right now. And we're using Pedro de Oro in the Mildias. And the only way for you to really understand and taste that tobacco is by adding in that Costa Rican, which has a high salt level, which will make you salivate so you can pick up the notes of the, um, of the uh, Pedro de Oro. So keep your eyes out on the, uh, for the Mil Diaz. My favorite size is the Edmundo. Uh, we copied a very popular uh, Monte Cristo Cuban size, the Edmundo uh, 5 and 3 eighths by 52. It's a beautiful smoke. Um, it is a beautiful light Ecuador Habano wrapper. Just a, just a beautiful smoke. And, I, and we believe that Mil Diaz is going to be a cigar you can smoke every single day. So the final score... For the poll, what? Oh, Miguel's, Miguel's here on uh, tooth and nail, like uh, biting his nails here. Come on, man. Let me know. Let me know. Average rating was 93.86. Oh, that's fantastic. Pretty good Beautiful. rating right there, right? I mean, is, that, well, is that out of 100 or is that out of 200? That's out of 100. <laughs> <laughs> Because if it was out of 200, I'd be like, damn. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, look, cigars are very uh, subjective and what really hits your palate. And I'm a cigar smoker. So being in the industry 20 years, well, 10 years before I got into business, that's what all I did was I smoked cigars. And so I, I honestly believe that every company works their rear end off on making great blends. And to me, there are no bad cigars. They're just cigars that you don't personally like. And I've smoked a lot of cigars that I don't personally like and other people have loved and other, and that sell really well. Um, we try very hard to create blends that we absolutely love that we want to smoke. And again, I, I echo that, you know, if you make a cigar that everyone likes, you're never going to make a cigar that everyone loves. So we want to make a cigars that people love. And hopefully some of you out there um, really fell in love with the cigar. And I hope you find it and you search it out and you look to back and it's either you buy brick and mortar, you buy online um, I really do hope you find this cigar and look, it's not the cheapest cigar on the market. It's, it's a, it's a cigar that's using the absolute best tobaccos, the best Connecticut broadleaf you get in the business, um, rolled by some of the best rollers in the industry. And so I think that it's, it's priced at a good price point, but we're very blessed to have the cigar in the market. And I hope each and every you remember you guys smoked the, uh, the, 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 uh, Gordito, the Robusto, there's three other sizes. I'd say, try those out, see what you think, kind of compare the sizes. We truly believe as cigar makers, you can't just create one blend and then make four sizes. 
we blend at every shape that we do. So every single size gets what we do is we call, we call it tweaking the blend for each size to make sure that that blend represents truly what that cigar is supposed to be. And, you know, it's not like making a big pot of cookies. You just double, double everything. It's really about finding what leaves will make that cigar stay consistent among all four sizes. So I hope all of you get a chance to smoke the three other sizes and let us know what you think. Awesome. Once again, we all, thanks for coming out. Um, we do, um, have next month packed already set up and what's going to happen is there's going to be two cigars from crown heads which are not the cigars you smoke but different ones that you're going to be able to uh, try out on next month so please contact us and let us know if you would like to get it on next month and there will be two options from crown heads that you can uh, try again because obviously there was uh, some good ratings on this one so i hope you guys enjoy those and um you know miguel you're the best man i appreciate you coming out well, I just want to say thank you guys for having me on here. Thank you, everybody. And I keep saying guys, but I know we have Robin on here as well. Cheers to you, young lady. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for coming on and enjoying the cigar. I think what you guys are doing, blind tasting, I think is some of the most fun you can have with cigars. Because when you've smoked for 10, 15 20 years we all have those biases in our mind and so when you get to smoke something blind i get to do it very often because throughout the year we're working on blends constantly and every company will tell you work on 20 different blends a year but maybe only release one or two of them and so smoking blind really kind of takes everything away and allows you to really use your knowledge of tobacco your years of smoking and all those years of experience that you have to kind of tune in to what that blend is and what that cigar tastes like it makes your palate sharper and i think makes you have a deeper appreciation for what cigars are so i'm just happy that we're a part of it and thank you guys for inviting me on and i hope everyone stays safe from covid stay safe and healthy and uh, Ryan, the other Ryan, make sure you got a, you got a tiger behind you. Be careful. Um, all you guys, much love and have a wonderful, blessed night, y'all. All right, guys. Um, once again, thanks for uh, joining the experience and seeing what cigars really taste like.